Despite going undrafted, Terrence Davis has been one of the best rookies in the NBA this season. On a deep Raptors team, he only plays 17 minutes a game, but he impacts the game on both ends of the floor. So today we'll highlight his value as a skilled and aggressive role player. So let's get to it. Let's start on offense where Davis is a valuable off-ball player, primarily due to his three-point shooting, where he's shooting 39.6% for the season. He has a smooth shot, and most importantly, he's not someone who will only shoot when he's wide open. He can fire without much space, which adds spacing value. Plus, he has range two, here hitting a trail three several feet beyond the arc. He wasn't a knockdown shooter at Ole Miss, which makes his shooting improvement extra impressive and every now and then, he shows he can shoot off of screens. That's important versatility. The shooting alone is key, but Davis makes himself more dangerous as he's adept at moving off ball. Here's a big time play. As Van Vliet drives, Davis fills behind the drive for the open three. This fill behind is very underutilized. Davis's defender is watching the ball, so coming behind the drive into space creates a great passing angle, and Davis hits off of movement. Here off of a ball screen, Van Vliet dribbles right, and really good urgency by Davis to fill. This makes it a longer closeout for his defender, and Davis takes advantage. He's an older rookie, and it shows in the off-ball details. Here's something simple. At first, his defender is in the passing lane, but he relocates up to make himself available even though it looks like Ibaka is shooting. Terrific engagement, and then he's not just a shooter, he can attack closeouts and make basic reads. His activity also translates into cutting, where every few games he'll get an easy bucket by outworking his defender and staying alert. And my favorite part of his off-ball game is when he channels his inner curry, meaning here, after he drives and kicks, he quickly relocates back to the three-point line for the corner three. For those that don't know, Curry is a master at this when he gives it up. Capella relaxes for a split second, which is all Steph needs. While not at Curry's level, this is pretty good here. Davis bursts ahead with the ball, gives it up, and never stops moving, leaving defenders behind. And this captures a theme in Davis' game film. He's a high-energy player, and when you pair that with his high-level intelligence, he's going to shine off-ball. Next, let's get to his on-ball potential. Right now in non-garbage time, he has a usage rate of only 17.7%, which is in the 27th percentile for his position, so he doesn't get too many chances to dominate the ball like we see here. But his flashes are flat out exciting. He takes bold off the dribble threes, and this one certainly raised my eyebrows. The tight handle, the quickness, the footwork on the step back, that looked like Kyrie. On off the dribble threes, he shot 32% this season, and if he can improve that a bit next year, now you have a guy who can pull up, handle, get to the rim, and finish once he's there, as he shot 66% at the rim this past season which is elite for his position. In terms of his finishing, much of it comes down to something I haven't talked much about yet, which is that he's a freak athlete. He can dunk in traffic when you don't expect it, and I love his aggressiveness. He tries to dunk everything. He's an explosive leaper who also has tremendous burst, which helps him get to the rim in transition. To complement his athleticism, he's strong, allowing him to absorb contact and finish, and he also possesses good touch with either hand, just a well-rounded, efficient finisher. To reach his creation potential, he'll need to improve primarily in the pick and roll, where he's not efficient yet, and he rarely makes this skip pass, but there's definitely room for optimism on ball. The best stat to highlight his offensive value is probably just his true shooting percentage, which is a good way to measure individual scoring efficiency. He's number one among all rookie guards, and a 59.8 true shooting is fantastic, rookie or not. Before we talk defense, I want to thank Effective Basketball for sponsoring this video. They're a great resource for coaches and players who are looking to improve. 
For instance, their best-selling program is with Pat Connerton and his personal trainer, where they dive into Pat's training regimen that helped him become one of the NBA's best dunkers. They bring in experienced professionals and get straight to the good stuff. So, click the link in the description to visit EffectiveBasketball.com. Now, Davis also adds value as a quality defender, and he impacts the game with his defensive rotations. He feels the game at a high level and is consistently on point with his basic sinks. Winslow drives, and as Van Vliet steps up, Davis sinks to take away the pass down low. Here the drive pulls in the low man pal, and Davis sinks to the corner. Notice how he doesn't wait for the pass, but he moves with the drive. He gets in the passing lane early, and then his teammates close out on top. The Raptors have lots of smart, experienced defenders, and it's impressive that Davis is able to keep up. McCaw sinks down, and Davis stays alert, facing the ball and anticipating the corner pass. I love this. Notice how Van Vliet and Davis work together on the weak side. They know the protocol. If Van Vliet commits low and leaves the corner shooter, Davis has to sink. Let's watch. Right now, they're seeing man and ball. Stay engaged, stay engaged. Okay, Van Vliet commits, now Davis has to sink. He's alert facing the ball, and he makes a great rotation. One last example, OG sinks low, and Davis does a great job of sinking, basically zoning up the weak side shooters. Now with his body facing the ball, he does have to be careful of his man cutting. And here, look how he sees Holiday cut out of the corner of his eye, and he takes it away. How is that a rookie? What also stands out is just his defensive aggressiveness. Let's do a little compare and contrast. First, check out Davis apply the Raptors' signature ball pressure, meeting Augustine at half court. He doesn't have to overdo it, but now Augustine has to initiate the offense quite high. The play is a pin down for Ross, and he's open right now, but the pass isn't accurate and no advantage is gained in part due to the pressure. These small things matter. Now contrast that play with this one. Look at Augustine play defense. He applies no pressure and simply backs up to the three-point line. The Raptors are setting up some screening action of their own, but here Van Vliet can just attack Augustine downhill, no problem. Davis's pressure and quickness also adds value in ball screen defense. Check this out. Look how he gets into Jackson and Davis pushes him back towards half court. Really nice job. Despite being listed at 6'4", he's also unafraid to meet players at the rim. Here Jokic feeds Morris, and not only does Davis rotate, but he uses verticality to protect the rim without fouling. One more example, McCollum drives to the rim, and Davis doesn't have time to take a charge, so he uses verticality, taking the contact in the chest. And to top it off, he's a good aggressive rebounder. He grabs 7 rebounds per 36 minutes, which is excellent for his position. He wins 50-50 balls, and it's simple, but just his willingness to pursue the ball is crucial. Davis's man isn't crashing, so no need to box out, and Davis pursues. All that being said, he's not a great defender as he does make some mistakes, and despite his verticality, he is a bit foul prone. But that's expected for a rookie, and defensive metrics still paint Davis as an above average defender due to his strengths such as rotations and rebounding. Well there you have it guys, Davis is a good player now and I'm optimistic about his scoring potential. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.